hate that question. You managed to extend your unbeaten run. We just drill against a team that's starting the local YMCA. Does this ever happen to you? We have more talent in one player than they do on their entire team. FM'd, forsaken by the football manager gods. If we want to win the league, we can't drop points against the children of the corn. Out XGing your opponent a million to one. Out shooting your opponent 5,000 to one and still losing? Well, do I have the thing for you? It's called Zealand. Three easy payments of you just watching these videos and subscribing on Twitch, and you can have all the information so this will never happen to you again. Legal notice that it is impossible to make this type of guarantee and that you are definitely going to get FM'd again whether you watch this video or not. It is impossible to avoid all FMings, and that is not the responsibility of this video creator or anybody associated with this video. You cannot sue or do anything else or laugh at the video creator because you will get FM'd again. Thank you. Have a good day. As long as you play football manager for like five minutes, you become familiar with this phrase called FMing or to get FM'd or FM cheese, cheddar, a nice brie, perhaps. Don't sleep on the Gouda. This is the process of you completely outplaying your opponent and losing or completely dominating and giving up a late goal. So here are four things that you can do to prevent this happening from you. And then four things that you can do uh, to prevent the other thing happening to you, right? Because there's kind of two things in here. You have on the one side, the idea that you are completely dominating a game, but then can't score and can't do anything to break down your opponent. Uh, and so you end up not winning. And then the other side, which is giving up late goals. We're going to talk about both. And obviously in order of play, we're going to go ahead and talk about the one that I put over my right shoulder first, which would be how to break opponents down. The better you get in Football Manager, the more you're going to run into these kinds of low blocks. Now, just an example from my Twitch save, which of course you can check out at the link down in the description. Or if you don't have time, there's now a live YouTube down in the description as well, where you can check out episodes uh, of the streams, just in case your Twitch isn't your thing or you don't have the time. I run into situations like this. The better and better that we're getting at Oriental Dragon, the more and more we run into a 4-5-1, a 5-3-2 perhaps, where you add an extra center back in here and things just get wild and crazy, right? Couple of defensive midfielders strewn us under. And then you put up numbers like this, you outshoot your opponent 24 to four, and then you end up in a 2-2 draw. So let's look at why this happened. So let me say off the top, you are particularly going to struggle with this sort of thing. If you are a counter team, if you are a direct team, because what I want you to watch uh, is this break forward. We have Samuel Fernandez. He's actually a very good dribbler from Famola Cal. I'm familiar with him. We've been playing against this guy for years. He picks up the ball and he attacks my fullback. Now we win the ball and in a normal world, in a normal situation, this is an obvious countering opportunity. But look at where everybody is, even though Samuel Fernandez is on the end line. You have one guy in the box, Toure. The other guy is already in a full-blown retreat, and even though he'll probably be outrun by Lamine Mendez, he'd be fine. Then the next set of three players is they're just all hanging out back there. This is the defensive midfielder. This is like your central midfield. That's your left winger. That's your right winger. They're all back. Your whole defense, I, the fullbacks aren't even in the picture. So tip number one is when you are playing against teams that are like this in the low block, have a plan that does not involve counterattacking or incredibly direct play, if that's what you're doing. That's the most obvious of all of these. But look, once we have the ball and we're looking to attack again, we, even though we are a very aggressive, you know, like we are a very aggressive formation, we're running that angled 4-3-3, that asymmetrical 4-3-3 that we always run with Oriental Dragon, where we've got two strikers up left and center, and then a right winger, and then three midfielders and a V. That normally can create a lot of pressure, get people up against the back line, but not against teams that are looking to do this. You're gonna have to come up with a different plan. Now you can run out and for 25, 30 minutes, try and play your basic plan, but have something else to go to that doesn't just involve countering or hoofing the ball up to somebody who is undoubtedly going to be outnumbered. Now the second note's also gonna come from this game against Famila Cow, where we're gonna be taking a bunch of lovely notes. This is coming off of a clearance to our talismanic center back, Kevin Barrientos. The clearance comes to him and he knocks the ball down for Jason Serna. There's a large debate that goes on between narrower or wider to break down these blocks. Here's how I'd recommend you decide. This is a two-pronged situation. Where is your talent? 
Do you have a lot of talent out wide or do you have a lot of talent in the middle? And how can you put that talent in the best position to succeed considering their numbers? So when a 4-5-1, a one center back is going to be sitting in front of that back line, generally right in that position, taking away this space. Now, what I've noticed off of this clearance and what we noticed through our analysis of this game, and unfortunately not while we were playing it, is that while they're coming out of this situation, they are very narrow. And this is the preset. They're narrow and forcing us out wide. Well, I have two world-class fullbacks. So watch as this play develops. They're still sitting narrow, right? This is Samuel Fernandez, who we met earlier. He's staying narrow. The fullback is tucked in, picking up one of my forwards, and the space is open in behind. I should have put my fullbacks on attack this game. They weren't. I should have put them one further up on the sides. They weren't. Because that would have put them in a position to get into that spot a lot more and then create chances against their actual back line as the midfield wasn't able to get back and recover. So if they're playing narrow, you're going to want to go wide and use your talent out wide. If you don't trust your talent out wide, then you probably want to go with a lower tempo and tell those guys to cross less but still play wider and then get the ball back inside, but use the width to stretch the team out. Now, if they're playing with like a back five and they don't have a defensive midfielder, I'm always for playing through the middle. You can get somebody between the lines and a team that doesn't have a defensive midfielder go as narrow as you want. Make sure when you're doing this, you don't have fullbacks running into wings as well. That, that can happen. You might want to change that winger role just to allow them to get into the box a little more. This play also brings up number three, and it's something that I talk about all the time <sighs> all the time on stream and that's when you want to break down blocks you have to produce runs that they can't expect one of the reasons my formation works so well with the striker on the left striker in the center and winger on the right is the defenders don't know exactly who to cover we're creating very difficult situations for the right back in particular dealing with the left forward or do you deal with my left back right especially when these attacking situations are brewing it's off kilter a little bit it presents a different look well something else that can do that is having midfielders that aren't just first touch pass merchants and this is a problem that i have all the time and it's a bit more of a higher level kind of thinking about the way that you structure your team you need midfielders that can get in the box because watch what happens here we've got jose matias who is my angolo conte we have jason serna who is my first touch passing merchant and then Ansi Karolainen's up here. Ansi Karolainen. <laughs> there he is. He is on attack. And this is a run that the defense is simply not expecting at all. Their midfielders are not able to cover this. Karolainen being on attack and being able to run and kind of make some noise in the box out of your classic Metsala role, uh, even though Metsalas stay wider in FM21 than they did in FM20 in all my observations. So that's just something to keep in mind. This is central midfielder on attack. This is a person that can get in the box repeatedly. It's a run that they are not able to track. See, boom, right back, right center back, left center back, left back. There is nobody on Ansi Karolainen. He's really good in the air. He almost stabbed that ball home. The third tip is create those runs. Whether it's an inverted wingback, somebody else that's arriving that the defense is not able to pick up. But enough of that. It's time for the fourth tip to avoid your basic FMing, which is when you have a lone striker with no supporting runs near them, you want to put every single opposition instruction ticked on that player every time and this is the match that i learned that watch as this clearance finds toure right we have everybody back and we're not dealing with anything else this ball's knocked down from toure and they're just not looking to push look at the mentality of these players they're not looking to go but toure helps them control possession we don't have marking we don't have close down he gets in front of the defense is able to receive the ball again and advance it huge problems for us at this point right we have them outnumbered in the box but once again we're not paying attention to Toure and he slips in and scores the only threat sometimes that these teams can create in terms of outlet gaining possession and then eventual goal scoring is this one single solitary striker that they will leave up there when they are trying to fm you tick every opposition instruction on that person remove any ability for them to get an inch to breathe or anything you do those four things you're gonna have much more success against teams that are afraid of you and obviously it's been working so far we've got 11 wins and two draws and 13 matches and we're usually playing teams now that are afraid of us we only just won the league last year <laughs> that league win though was a close shave 
And you know who else can give you a close shave? Manscaped! Except that shaving does not really occur up here. It occurs below and uh, below the belt in the southern hemisphere if you were but i'm here to get you 20 percent off on making sure that you can take care of your tennis balls or soccer balls or whatever you want to call them uh, as efficiently as possible efficiently is that the right word it's about efficiency and comfort really manscapes a big supporter of the channel they offer precision tune tools to trim your family jewels <laughs> that was good i like that and they've just come out with this Super duper lawnmower 4.0, which honestly feels like a cloud in the nether regions. If it works for me, let's like, it'll work for you. And it already works for 2 million other people. So the lawnmower 4.0 has some skin safe, advanced technology that's all trademarked and patented and stuff and is fancy. It's got different length settings. It's wireless charging. And it's got this neat little LED light for precision trimming. And you can get 20% off and free shipping with code ZEALAND at manscaped.com, link down in the description. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. I feel like I could be that guy that reads commercials on TV. That might be my future. You know me, I don't work with companies unless they're actually good and this it, it's good it works it also comes with ball deodorant if you can figure out how that works let me know it smells nice though almost as nice as the smell of victory which now that you can get to a lead let's talk about how you can maintain that lead so you don't get fm'd in the 97,000th minute tip number one and you're winding down to the end of a game, right? You're coming down to the end of a game. You have a lead. The lead is tenuous. You are worried. As long as you are not by far the better team, which is something that we're going to cover with one of the tips later, you need to have a defensive version of your tactic. You will notice when I am playing on stream, when we score a goal late to take the lead or in the last 15 minutes, which is usually my cutoff to come back to my more defensive tactic, I will take the right wing back, the left wing back over here. I will switch this to deep lying playmaker and I will switch this to support. I'll switch these guys to wing back on defend. I'll come over here, drop this to balance, lower the tempo, lower the passing directness, turn time wasting to half, right? Regroup, slow down pace, keep distributing short, and then bring this line all the way back. And it took me about 15 seconds, and this is the more defensive version of my tactic. Now, what you'll notice is I'm not completely giving up the goose here. I am not on very defensive. I did not turn time wasting all the way up. I did not turn tempo and passing directness all the way down. You can do this in the final couple minutes of a match. I mean, stoppage time exclusively, because this is when you are not trying to score at that point. Think about in a game when you would want to try not to score, that's when you want to do that. With 15, 20, maybe in 30 match, uh, minutes left in a game, if you're uncomfortable with the way that it's going, you're uncomfortable with the space that they're finding, have a defensive version of your tactics somewhere that the players that you have on the field can go to be in a better defensive position. If you don't, if you've just got two forwards that can only play forwards, start training one of them to go somewhere else or save a substitution so that you can actually switch the way that your team plays. But it's much more preferable for me to have a setup that looks like this so that in case they score again anyways, which which of course, as we covered in a disclaimer at the beginning is possible, you can shift right back up to being more offensive. If you make the substitution, you don't have that option. The second tip is find a way to take away the space that they are trying to exploit. What teams will often do, especially when you're not just in the run of a season, but you're in a cup, you're in some match where it's all on the line, everything matters, or they think they're better than you and they wanna go put more pressure on you because you have the lead. They're going to try and create overloads. Often this will happen by switching to a 4-2-3-1 and having some inside forwards. It's a space shuttle taking off outside. And you'll have a 4-2-3-1, some inside forwards and a shadow striker. Sometimes they'll bring on a third striker and all of a sudden you've got a front three and that can create serious mismatches, especially if you're like me and you use your fullbacks way up the field, well, all of a sudden it's three on two all the time or maybe they're trying to overload a certain side and you are noticing that. You will see this, it's why I recommend playing on extended highlights. Comprehensive is 
a little bit, but it's a bit much for me, but extended allows you to see things like this, flows of the game, heat maps. Now, what I do a terrible job of here is taking that away. So we have Armando Sieb, who is the Arsenal Shadow Striker, as you can see on this formational screen that they came up with. We've got a Wusu as the striker and Manrial, who is coming in off the left. Now, all of a sudden it is a three on two. I've got a couple of tiddlywinks up here doing absolutely nothing in this game against Arsenal. Then this is my fault. I did not see this. I did not anticipate it. The way that we can counter this is playing a more narrow defense. And I have a couple of other options. One, I can go narrow defensively. Two, I can add another defensive midfielder. Three, I can add in another center back if I have that kind of ammunition off my bench. And all of a sudden, with three center backs in the middle, it is very hard for them to get a two-on-one and score a tying goal in the 92nd minute of a 3-3 match, making me fade into... Uh, a pit of self-loathing and remorse, slamming my desk, nearly breaking my keyboard, backflipping onto my bed, and just generally ruining my existence for the next couple of hours. But it's okay, it happens. They still got eliminated, and we still went through. But that's how you see what space they're exploiting, and then use a couple of tactical tweaks to react to it so you can get through those last 10 minutes. Tip number three. This is essentially a reminder from what we just talked about. Do not go into a shell too early. This is something that everybody does, especially when you're starting out, you get a lead against a team you're not supposed to have a lead against, or you have a lead and it's getting nervous, they're getting a shot or two, you go very defensive, super time-wasting, blah, 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 blah. You can give away your control of the game. Now you see teams do this in real life all the time. You can accidentally give away your control of the game. You're the better team, you're more likely to score. Don't go into the shell too early. My general rule of thumb, if I score a goal to go take the lead, I feel like we can finish the game off. I'll stay very aggressive to 75, maybe even 80 minutes if I'm feeling comfortable with the flow of the game to give us a chance to go out and score a goal that's going to go ahead and win it for us. The second goal would completely bury it. And then I bring it up. I bring people back. I call the dogs off. How, whatever phrase you want to use. But don't recede into that shell too early because you need to play the game like it's 0-0 zero, zero for the majority. Now, if you're playing against a better team, having somewhat time wasting on, right? You're cheeky, we go play Real Madrid and this is the way our directness is set up from the beginning. That's fine. You want to play a slower game, shrink the number of chances everybody's going to have. That's okay. I'm talking about removing your ability to influence the game effectively with your talent before you need to. And then there's the last one. Change your set pieces. My normal set pieces look like this. They're pretty tepid, right? I try and keep two people back. Sometimes you'll end up with three people up here on your corners. And we all know playing football manager that sometimes that ball gets headed out and it lands right over here. And all of a sudden they're on the ball. And it could end up with a four on two just because you're not paying attention. Have a couple of dudes that you can just bring on back here for the last 10 minutes of the game so you don't get smoked like Gouda trying to defend this. Corners are the most important you can get countered off throws to. Have maybe even a saved set of routines to bring a couple people back uh, and then just go in and load that routine up with like 15 minutes to go in the game so that you don't get countered. Because there's nothing more frustrating than the AI mechanics of Football Manager every once in a blue moon that can screw you on a countering move. And that's it. I've pulled everything out of my brain that I can possibly pull to help you not get FM'd on Football Manager. You will still get FM'd on Football Manager. People get FM'd in real life all the time. It happens. But these are all the things that I do uh, and that other people have talked about doing and we've had conversations with on stream to help you have it happen less. Preserving sanity. That's what we're about here. I'm gonna go eat. I'm hungry. Hard work sitting all day.